Hey guys, it's Lindsay from the blog Repurpose and Upcycle, and today I am talking about making over these lovely 1980s bifold doors. Uh, sadly, my son has lived with these doors since we bought the home four years ago, and I've just about had enough, and I know he has too. Watch as I give these doors a quick and budget-friendly makeover. The first thing you're gonna do is remove these doors. Now for me, it wasn't that hard because half the time they don't stay on the track anyway. So you wanna remove uh, the rollers on the top of the doors and the bottom of the doors. And you can see where I'm removing the track from inside the door frame. Once you've taken the doors off the track and you've removed the track, you're gonna wanna remove the hardware from the doors. Uh, and go ahead and remove any knobs that you currently have on them because uh, we're gonna be giving the whole thing a makeover. Now, how do we attach the two doors together? You can see I'm using these mending braces. I'm using two mending braces. Uh, each one has six screw holes, so they're, they're drilled together with six screws. So I felt like that was, um, that should be enough to hold the two doors together. Next, what I did was I took this water putty because I wanted to get rid of that seam line in the middle. Water putty is my go-to furniture repair uh, product. It works similarly to like Bondo, but I actually like water putty better. I can kind of control like the consistency of it more. And I like that I don't have to mix specific amounts. I can just add as much water as I need to and it's going to eventually dry. So you can see here, I'm just using the water putty to hopefully get rid of that seam down all four of my new doors. I did go in and try to use a block hand sander and that worked okay, but what I realized was it did a lot better with an electric sander. In the middle of working on the doors, one thing I did was I went back to the closet frames and I had to remove that little piece of molding that you normally have with any bifold doors. It didn't take much, I just had to score the caulk lines, gave it a little tap, and then I could remove it. Like I said earlier, the hand sander didn't work really well, so I took out the electric sander and I started to use it and it did a better job. Uh, overall, it sanded everything pretty smooth. I started with a coarse grit sandpaper, ended with a fine grit. Sadly, you could still see the line really, really, really faintly. So because of this, I did decide to put molding over the front. I did leave the back because I figured the back would look okay with just the uh, water putty, but I am going to put a piece of molding over the front. So you can see this is the lattice that I bought to kind of spruce up the front of these doors a little. And the great thing is it covers that seam. So really you'll never know it's there. And you can see I didn't do any fancy cuts. They're all just straight cuts with the lattice work. I just measured out and I used a miter saw to come in and just, like I said, cut straight cuts. I did a piece of molding at the top, a piece of molding at the bottom, uh, one in the center, and then three of them, two on the sides and one in the middle to cover that seam. Once I had all the lattice work where I wanted it, I came in with my nail gun. Um, I secured the lattice with my nails. And after I did that, I came in with some putty. The putty did a good job of filling all those holes and making the cut lines look like they aren't even there. Uh, once it was good and dry, I used my sander with a fine grit sandpaper. I sanded over it to make sure it was really good and smooth. And then I sat them up in my garage in preparation for paint. Now, the first thing before I even thought about painting was to wipe them down really well. Uh, I used a damp paper towel and I just tried to get all of the, the debris and all of the extra sawdust up. Now I got my paint sprayer and I'm starting to paint. Always start with a primer. I will link my products below, but you can see my first coat is the primer coat. I did one coat of primer and then I did two coats of paint and I used a bare cabinet and door and trim paint. I will link all my products below, um, but I used one coat of primer because it was already white so I didn't feel like I needed to use another coat of primer. And then two coats of paint and I made sure to have ample dry time in between. Once the doors were completely dry and painted, I couldn't wait to get them in and get the hardware on. Here is the hinge hardware I used. I put two of these on each door and I felt like that was sufficient. They are super heavy duty and they have three screws in each. 
So I, I felt like that was sturdy enough to do two of those per door, one at the top and one at the bottom. The hardware was really easy to install. I measured uh, 10 inches down from the top and 15 inches up from the bottom. Here's what it looked like installed. Uh, one thing to note when you're buying your hardware, just make sure you don't buy anything wider than the actual width of the door. I almost made that mistake. Time to put the doors on the doorway. You can see in order to find the perfect height, I just used a few books just to get it up there and measure just to see, okay, so how tall, how high up off the ground do I need to put the doors to make sure they fit in the doorway. And then once I found the right height, I got my little helper to help me hold it while I started the screws. Once I got started, it was really pretty easy just to uh, keep going. And um, yeah, once you put the hinges on these doors, they are fully functioning. Now the last thing I did once I got the doors in place was put the hardware where it locks when you close it. And I'll show you how to do that. Before I could install the closing hardware, what I did was install a scrap piece of wood behind that piece of molding. And what that does is this is what you're going to use to attach, see there it is, to attach the hardware that allows the doors um, to close and keep shut. It's basically just two magnetic pieces that come together and they hold together with that magnetic force. And then just like that, I have two functioning swinging French doors. Once again, let's go back and look at the old bifold doors that really didn't function at all. See, that one wouldn't even stay on its track. So from the old doors to the new doors, these are so much more functional, and not to mention they look so much better. I hope you found this to be an easy tutorial on how to transform bifold doors into classic swinging French doors. As always, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. Make sure to like and subscribe.